anything. Um, we don't have to go too in depth because pretty much what I wrote on the etiquette part, um, you know, just pretend it's a letter. Don't, it's not a, it's not a text. The, 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 I put like my main pet peeves in there. So people that type in all caps just drives me crazy, even on, on texting, but, um, but make sure you have a clear subject line. And if you're just asking somebody a question, don't just put the question in the subject line and send a blank email. <laughs> Cause I, I, I mean, I'll glance at the subject line, but I just open it if it's from somebody that I know. So I'll just open it and look at it and then there's nothing there. And I'm like, what's going on? And then I look and there's a question in the subject line. I'm like, okay, that was a waste of time. <laughs> Two extra um, clicks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and make sure you, you greet people when you're, when you're sending your email. So say hi, put their name there. Um, and, and, and just make sure you use your grammar and punctuation and do your spell check. Don't use a crazy font that people can't read. Um, mm. keep them short. They don't have to be huge long emails but um and then my other thing that drives me crazy somebody will send me an email I'm reading the email and they call me and ask me the questions <laughs> just like so why didn't you just call me <laughs> so, so give somebody a, a chance to respond to you <laughs> and then um just be careful when you're sending files because that can um if it's a large file it can flag you for um spam out in the universe and then people won't get your emails um pdf is like the most universal format for um like a, a word document and just watch if you're sending pictures or anything like that you want to use a, a jpeg file format if you're just sending you know just just sending a picture i mean I, there there are times that you would want your higher resolution files but they, they take up a lot more room and it takes a lot more time for people to download them, so. A lot more room. <laughs> Some of your mail will not accept the, the larger uh, full size photos, so don't get exaggerated <laughs> with that. <laughs> One photo can be 27 to 30. That's large. Yeah. Very large. Does, does it, anybody else have anything to add to the one pet peeve. Pet peeve. <laughs> Subject line. Again, if I am res if I receive an email from somebody that's asking me to respond to something or to do something with whatever the content is, but they've received it from another person, I may not get in the subject line any words that have anything to do with the content of the email. What that does is when it comes up in my mail, I don't, I don't have a kind of warning that tells me I really need to look at that quickly. So when you, when you, when you're dealing with subject line and you respond to somebody, don't just click on forward such and such and such. Take that forward out there. Make sure the subject line is what you're talking about, and make it make it work for you and for them because otherwise if you have to go back and look for that email you may not find it i mean it could be buried in we all have tons of mail particularly this year and 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 that's what happens is can't find the email so that's pretty much my only pet peeve in mail other than maybe we don't all get our mail Don't know what to do about that. <laughs> what about the etiquette of responding to all or if you're copied or do you have a right to respond if you're copied, isn't it only for your information, not for you to participate in a response and some of that. And I don't quite understand all of, and doesn't that come just under etiquette? If, and, and I don't know if there's like hard and fast rules, but just for myself, it drives me crazy if somebody sends out let's just say um, they're, they're sending out a video that they found funny and they send it to, you know, all their 
friends and whatever, and you're you're in that, and then everybody responds with a reply all, with a reply all, and they just say, "Oh, that's funny." I don't care if somebody else thinks it's funny. I find it funny. I don't find it funny. That's it. I may respond directly to that person, so I will just reply to the person that sent it. I do not use reply all in that situation. That's so if you're responding and it's something that needs to be, everybody needs to, in that email chain, needs to have your input on that, I would go ahead and reply all. But like you said, if it's a CC, so they sent it to you just for your information, but maybe you want to reply to that person, Mary, I would reply to the person that sent it. I wouldn't send it. I wouldn't send it to everybody. Let, if, if it's something that you're saying, here's my input on it. Yeah. And you let them decide if they're going to share it with everybody else. That's that's, that's me. What happens in committees and in boards. If you collectively get that from a lot of people, it's a lot of extra mail. Mm -hmm. And the subject line will probably not be changed. Right. <laughs> and I've always been told that you're not allowed to forward something to somebody else without the sender's permission. That's, that might be common courtesy, I think. It, it depends yeah. what it is, but if it's publicly if it's open to everybody anyway, but for the most part, mm, be careful. Yeah. That's all my questions. Okay, anybody else have questions? Gonna be you. And then I just had, um, was there somebody that did? I'm sorry. No. No, okay. And then I didn't know if people just wanted to talk about issues that they have with their email. I mean, I went ahead and put down um, different things we can talk about, but I don't, I don't want to go over something if, ever, if that's something that everybody understands. So like the CC versus the BCC um, and why you would use the BCC, the, the blind carbon copy. I did put my example in there because it will put hundred I do a hundred names in each group when I send out the newsletter and if I put that in the CC part everybody's got those emails addresses and it's the, like a whole long list and you no know, nobody needs to have all you know see all of that you got to scroll f three pages before you get to the actual body of the email so because it's a link <laughs> wow what about the whitelisting thing? I, I think people need to understand what that whitelisting is all about, why we use it. Okay. Um, so every platform, every email platform does try to filter out spam or uh, emails that they think might be harmful or malicious. So um, where on, the, I'll just use the newsletter as an example that gets flagged because I'm sending it to multiple people right there. Just the number of, because the email program knows how many people that's getting sent out to. I mean, when, when it's coming in. So I send it to Julie. Julie's email program knows that there are 99 other people on that list. And so it's going to say, oh, this is probably spam. This is, you know, junk mail. So it may not even come to your junk mail folder. Our um, spam filter at work, um, mm -hmm. We don't even have access to the it guy is like the he can go out there and look for something to see if it went to spam the spam folder but it doesn't even come like i think i get like two things in my junk mail a year that that come through and then my my computer thinks and eh, this might be junk mail um so it's not like my personal email where you know i have a hundred a day emails in the in the junk mail folder and i just quickly Right. Sort it, sort it by who it's from, and look down through there and see if there's anybody I need, and then I delete it and get it out of there. So, um, so whitelisting is 
you get an email that's in your junk mail and you can tell it this is not spam, but that doesn't always work. It might come back to your junk mail the next time. So if you go into the settings in your email program, um, you can say this email address specifically is a, is a good email, or you can say that the domain, so anything after the at sign. So it could be anything at um, memphisareamastergardeners.org. Anything before that, it, it's not gonna worry about. It's just gonna say anything from memphisareamastergardeners.org is good. And it will always put those in your inbox. So, and then the other thing is you, you keep getting something in your inbox that you don't want, you can go into your settings and you can block that email address. So it does not show up in your inbox. I don't know about PC, but I know on Mac, we can create rules. Yes, we can. So if, you, if you start getting email, repeated emails from whomever, you you have to figure it out because I'm not gonna, we're not gonna go through it each way for each operating system, but rules can make those go away and they go straight to a trash uh, folder or, or even may not even get there. They just flat out delete them automatically. So yeah, that is something that if it starts being that you can have rules. Now the trick is, once you start using that, you'll find that it works quite well, but you might end up having 150 rules in a, in a, week, in a, in a month. And that, then it starts getting to be too much time. So use it kind of wisely if you do look into it, um, but it does work well. And I use the rules to, like I set up folders. So I have my inbox and then I have a, a master gardener folder and I have a family folder and I have this and that and everything and you can use the rules to send that email to that folder right it's and then like a sort mm -hmm. is what it's doing it's sorting them into each folder and it helps because if you're looking at 150 emails that come in in a morning <laughs> you get a little cross-eyed and go you know, try to get the deleted ones out there real fast. And and that's that's what I do is I will sort. So it comes in in date order mm -hmm. normally is how I have it in my inbox. But then when I if I have a bunch of email, I will sort it by who it's from. And then you can automatically see the junk mail that got through. You can just delete all of those and then you can go back and address them in whatever order you want to address them in. But um, I do use use that a lot. Um, sort by date, sort by name, let's see who it's from. Sometimes um, if you subject. lose something or you're trying to find something in your mailbox, that sort feature she just mentioned is very helpful because if you sort it according to name or word or whatever, whatever topic, and then you go put the word in the search feature that you're looking for, you have a way better chance of locating what you're what you're what you're trying to find. It, it, um, How I, is I, search and sort different? Sort sort is just the order. Sort is just the order that it shows up on your screen. Search okay. will go in and find a specific word or email address or whatever you put in the search. It will find that. So where do you find the command sort? Okay, it's what, usually. What Mac is under a view. I think, yeah, under Mac, it's under the, uh, it's sort by under the drop down under the view, but I don't know where it is on PC. What, uh, what email do you use, Mary? Outlook. Outlook? Okay. I hooked my Hotmail up to Outlook so we could do Outlook on here. Well, I, have, I don't want you I, to just find it for me. I just know, nope. know where the search button is. Yeah about sort and I didn't know how you found that. It's usually a drop down. It's actually a little hourglass on, um, all right, let's see if I can do this. Screenshot it.
All right. Do you have your Outlook open, Mary? No. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> I am going to do this. Well, now I can minimize this, can't I? Can you minimize mm -hmm. this? You sure can. Okay. No, that makes me look like I'm getting out of the whole thing. Don't do that. No, I'm going to dismiss. Okay, now I have my Outlook open. All right, so right up at the top in the blue bar or whatever color, see the little hour, uh, hourglass, not hourglass, spyglass, and it says search. There's like a lighter color. I'm got, getting a screenshot here. I can share. Yeah, I get a screenshot. It'll be faster. Ms. Mary, I'm looking at Outlet now. It's, it's right above where your emails are. It's something similar in Yahoo or Gmail right. or everybody um, has one. You just have to find which drop down or where 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 the indicator is because it, it it it's helpful. Yeah, because it says search current mailbox, but it's right above where your um, there you go sent emails would be or the emails that somebody's sending you. It's just right up top because I, I use it a lot. If you send me an email or something and. I need to go back and see what that last email was. I just put in your name. Right. Look and see, Is I just uploaded a file. Did it come through or do I need to make it it's a PDF? It's not through yet. You put it in the chat box. She can open it. I Yeah, that's what I did. Oh, no, it's not there yet. <clears throat> I think because it's, a, let me make it a PDF. I only see you, Dawn. <laughs> I don't see anything else right now. It's on speaker view. Up in the upper left, uh, right hand corner, you can click that where it says view, you can click that to different ones. Click it back and forth, you'll see what happens. Uh, and then now I see Julie, but I don't see I any. I see it in the chat box. Okay, it's I just uploaded a PDF. So you guys right. should be able to oh, there it is. Now you can open it, Mary. All I see is you and when no. Dawn talks right. off. Turn, turn the chat box on. Go down Qu to the chat box and open I it. I can't get the whole screen yet. You all go ahead and I'll catch up. Okay. All right. Up the right-hand corner, you click the different views. You can do gallery or speaker. If you do gallery... The chat box should show up down at the bottom. And you can yeah, click I was going to say chat. the chat box is down at the bottom, Mary. Just click that, and then you'll see. No, I know. Side. I know where the chat box is. I just have lost the whole screen. I'll find it now. I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. It. I had to click a few things. <laughs> okay. So now I'm in the chat box, and I see what you sent. Okay. Okay. All righty. I think oh. I see what where we are. So, so up at the top where it says search, you can just type anything you want in there. So you could type somebody's name if you were looking for a specific email. It would bring up all the emails from that person. You could do a subject line and it will even search in um, if there are attachments. Yeah. So if you're searching for your name in something and Julie sent you the list of all the members it would pull that up even though it wasn't from you. So okay. it's pretty cool. All righty. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Dawn, I had a question. Yes. Oh, well, actually it's two questions. Um, one is a question from a email for idiots, which is what is the quick and easy way to set up a group email list I mean, right now I'm copying and pasting 
when I'd done it to the group the first time, but I want the permanent thing where all I have to click on is one thing. But my, my other question is, uh, how do you send it? So I get emails sometimes where obviously it went to a group of people, but all I see is my name. So sure. I want to be able to send emails to a group, but not have everybody there. I want that. I know there's a way to do it where there's just one recipient's name, but you've actually written the email. You know, so, you don't have to put each person in individually, um, but only one name shows instead of all of the names you sent it to. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when you set up your group, and yeah. um, so let's just say, so I have a group of people that I have set up. Um, yeah. And when I when I send that? out the email to to have people proof the newsletter, so I've got like six people that I send it to. And, and have people look it over. So if you set up that group and you tell it, these six people are in there and in um, it's, you know, a tough name like newsletter proofers or something like that. That's my, that's my um, name of the group. And if that's all you type in there, it pulls those names in. Now you can tell it to expand that so you can look and see what names are in there. But once you do that, it will show all the names when you send the email. So if it just says the name of the group, only the person that is getting that email, that they'll only see their name. They won't see all the others. Is that? Yeah, that's what I was asking. That, that, that part was what you were asking and then you wanted to know how to set them up? Yeah, how do you set up a group? So do you, which um, email? Gmail. Gmail? Yeah. Okay. Let me get mine open. And so you have to have it. everybody in your contacts. Okay. Is there an actual thing that says contacts? Because I don't yes. see it. Yes. Is? Yes. What's it under? I mean, I'm Let looking me... at it. I mean, I'm looking at the Gmail screen. It's on the right of your email. And it'll say contacts. And then when you go in there, you can click on each contact and assign them a name, like a group name. The right of my email, you know, if I'm getting ready to write an email. Oh, in, no, your con the, in your contacts. On the right hand side, there's those little squares. No, I'm not seeing that. What what page in Gmail? I mean, I I, I just pulled up Gmail. And you've got your mail open. Yeah, it says okay. It's open. And on the left I have my choices, you know, primary search mail, whatever. Okay. Um, Look to the right. To the right at the top, I have the download thing, the trash can, and the, you know, keep as new. And then the three Look. dots. Yeah, look at the three dots. There's snooze, move to, change labels, mute, okay. report spam. There's no... Um, labels. Go, go to your labels, because that's what you're doing, is you're labeling your contacts. So it's not going to say contacts. It's going to say label. It just says change labels. Contacts on mine. I mean, I had the little tag that says, you know, labels, but. Contacts is a little person on that right hand side. And there's orange and then a check mark and then a little, uh, like a little person. Blue right circle with side, white. I don't have anything like that on the right hand side. Nothing like that. Trying to get signed into mine. Sorry. <laughs> What I find is, especially in mail systems, because we have different mail systems and different computers, whether it's a Mac or a PC, when, you, when you're trying to find that out, I find Google be very helpful if you just ask that sentence, how do I set up a group in my mail system on a PC? You know, okay. and, and you may get an answer. Uh, chances are you're going to get an answer. Um, and it's go to YouTube because a lot of people yeah. have made lots of YouTube yeah, videos so that's how to do it. I have to admit, I had to do that when I set up my greenhouse email. Yeah. So is it, is, is the Gmail screen going to look different on a like an iPad versus my computer? Oh yeah. Yes. Because okay, I, I use them both of them. So right now I'm looking at my iPad because I'm watching you guys on the computer. Oh. So that's what I'm saying. I pulled up Gmail, but there's none of that stuff y'all are saying should be. Yeah, here. I can't get to my groups on my iPad or my iPhone. I can only do it okay. from my PC. 
right, so that's one it's of a, the it's, problems. It's a constricted right. screen, so you're going to have different things. So when you're doing, when you're setting up a group, go to your computer okay. and do it. Like it, on a Mac, I can add additional yeah. people and I can take people out, but you have to, you're better, way better off doing that on a full size computer. Okay, I'll do it on the computer and I'll quit trying to figure it out on the iPad because I'm going, I'm not <laughs> finding a way to do this. So, okay, that was my question. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody else? Okay, well, now, now I'm curious. After you get everybody, you said you got to have everybody in your contacts. Now, how would you form the group from there? Uh, on a Mac, you, you, you start your information for forming the group and then it allows you to go to your contacts and you just select those emails and it puts them in it. Okay. It's not even a matter where you have to re-enter them. You've entered them, they're already in your contacts. Mm -hmm. So you're just selecting them out of your contact list and putting them in that group. Just make sure your group name is very specific to what you want. Don't make them all similar because you'll get confused and the <laughs> wrong group will get the wrong email. But, um, <laughs> and then you have to always be aware of the fact when you make a group, if it's a moving kind of group where you've got people going in and out, make sure you've added and taken out because somebody will say, well, I'm in the group and I didn't get the email. Okay. Because it gets very easy to do groups, you know, instead of typing in 12 emails. You know, if you're just typing in a couple of words, it's wonderful. Um, but you do have to keep up with changes. And that you have to do manually. All right. I finally got my uh, Gmail open. <laughs> Different operating systems also treat different mail systems weird in their in their mail system. Like uh, Mac doesn't really like Gmail in the in the way it's laid out on the screen. You know, instead of just instead of just having an inbox and whatever goes in it, I'll have something that Gmail calls important. Now I don't know why they decide that, but I will get some of my Gmail in the regular inbox and some of my email in important. And I never made that decision. It's, so I have to look in both. On, I just opened my Gmail screen uh -huh. and I still don't see the word. It's not a word, it's a, it's a, little, it's a little icon on the right hand side that is a blue circle with a little. Oh, with my initial in it? That's my Google nope. account. Go down, go down. It's a blue, I don't know, my, my initials nice. D, I mean, is orange. So go down further in, there's a whole row, a uh, whole column of different icons. Just hold your pointer over it and it'll tell you contacts when you get to the right one. Okay, no, no. I have calendar, keep, tasks, and then I have contacts. Nope, I've got the blue with a K in it. I click on that and- Nope, don't just, click on nope, that. What's don't. underneath? <laughs> what what is underneath that? It. There's nothing underneath it. Underneath it is my arrows to go forward to the next group of um, emails. There's nothing underneath the K. To the left of it, there's a the whole, you know, whole bunch of dots where you go to your different things, then the settings and then the support. That's all you know, on the right hand side and at the bottom of the screen there's nothing either. You know, Don, there's something I think that the I, view. I think it's we, the view you have. We need set to up. have them all we need to show them all how to do a screenshot. Okay. Because I think that, um, that's a good maybe, idea. I don't where do know you that. Change <laughs> view at? Where do you change the view at? Um, I was just in so, so up to the left of my initial is yeah. the, the little gear icon that's setting. Yeah, yeah, settings. And so there's density, theme, inbox type. Right. right. So I have it on the default. Is that what you have it on? Yes. Inbox type default. And then um, down below that, it, there's a reading pane. Yes. I have no 
but that can be different depending on how somebody has set it up. Okay. Reading pain. Because you might have your reading pain below. Well, the reading pain, the reading pain was the first one. So what should I have? No that split. Do? No split. I've got that. Okay. And the next thing says email threading. And I have checked conversation yeah. view. And then that's so um oh wait, no, see more settings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hangouts. Show the meet section of the yeah, there weren't. Hangout. Are you on a Mac? No. Oh, I see. Okay. So when I click see more settings, there's general labels, inbox accounts and import, filters and blocked addresses, forwarding and pop uh, map, IMAP, add ons and chat and meet. I still don't see a view are you, about changing could the you, view. Are you doing this through webmail? Did you go to the Gmail on, online to look yeah. at it? Yeah, my Gmail thing right here, my account that I click on every day to read my Gmails. It's online though. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> what you're asking. Do Dr. Chris, could you have, um, could, I, could I share my screen? Yes. Okay, let me go back to Zoom. Oh, your screen is in our chat. What was that? Your screen is showing up in our chat. Is that where I see your screen? Um, I'm, I haven't shared it yet. Oh, okay, because I said I don't see it yet. Okay. Well, while we're doing that, so for me on my PC to do a screenshot, you have the screen up that you want and I hold down the control key and then um, up where the function keys are, there's a PRTSC, hold down the function key, hit that, and then you have to open up a Word, blank Word document and paste it in there. That's cool, Mary. Can we get that put in a, in a, in a, in a Word just, document, that don't what you just me. said? Don sent me information. Oh, awesome. Because that's pretty clear. That's for PCs. Macs are just three keys. I was going to say, I have to hear that at least one more time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm typing, a, okay. typing a, a screen name. and I'm. So you have your control key. And yes. then up where your function keys are, one of those function keys should have PR... T S C so print screen and it okay. might be it, it might be in like an orange color or something like that so you do that and then you open up a word document and you paste it in there okay. and then I always turn it landscape and make and then you can make it bigger so people can see it okay thank you Yep. You do it if you do it a few times, it, it'll become second nature to you. You you won't have to think about it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am sharing my Gmail screen. Boy, I'm curious. Now I gotta get back to it. Okay, Kim, so so your screen doesn't have anything over on the right hand side. Is that what you're saying? Does right. it does yours look anything like mine or do I have an older version of are you doing this on a share screen or did you send a file? I sent a file. Okay. It's to the right. Ah, that makes it static. Yeah. Uh, I was trying out the print screen while you were while you were telling us how to do it. Gotcha. Now. 
now I've actually printed uh, the Zoom meeting <laughs> in my Word <laughs> document. <laughs> I'm trying to get back to the actual Zoom meeting uh, yeah. and get rid of this. There we go. All right. Yes. Now, where is your uh, screen at? I mean, where is your I, share? It's down in it's the chat. Not, it's not letting me share. Okay. Well, don't, don't worry about it. I'll, uh, I'll oh. uh, it's I got somebody it, coming on for Christmas, so I'll get him to sit down with me. The, the PDF in the in the chat room opens up quite nicely. You can look at my screen that way. Okay. Oh, I got it now. <laughs> I think okay. the the entire communication system across the country is on slowdown. In case anybody <laughs> hadn't noticed. <laughs> okay, so I got to move pictures out of the way. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes. So over here on the right, here's where my contacts are. Oh, I don't have anything like that. It stops with the D. I mean, with where your D, I don't have any of those things over there. Hmm. Don, I think yours okay, is- Okay, what about, oh, no, hang out. What you set, so what do you, how do you, Don, do you have yours set up in your, what is your mail system, uh, Outlook? No, it's, uh, this is, I just log on. You just, you do webmail. Mm -hmm. She's doing her mail by going to Google Mail, which opens up her screen because she's got it that. Some of us have our Gmail account actually attached to our mail system. In my case, it's a Mac. And so it would be attached to Apple Mail. If you're a PC, it might be Outlook if you use Outlook. There's other it's mail Outlook. systems. I mean, I don't use Outlook. I just use. You go to webmail. So it's email. Yeah. I don't know. You, you can, everybody's can look quite different on how you set it up. Do, do you see that over here on the left-hand side? Do you have the three lines? Hamburger. My, yes, my hamburger. Click yes, that and see if it. Nope, that only changes the left hand side. No. I mean, I have categories where I've saved ma mail, but I don't right. have context. I can't find context. Let's go to the bottom. Sometimes contacts are way hidden. Okay. All right. Do you see this down here? Do you have a. A little there circle with an arrow. Uh, wait a minute. I just right down at the bottom. <laughs> that made it go, go away and come back. Uh, let me get back to your screen now. Show me what you're showing me. So right down here at the bottom, there's a little oh, um, arrow. Right. Now, do you have? If you click it, uh, it's hiding the side panel. Okay, let me go back. I couldn't see what you were doing. Um, <laughs> Do they let you resize your the area, Don? Uh -uh. Oh. I do have a little arrow that says show side panel. Okay, so show the oh, side there panel. It is. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> See, thank you. I'm sorry. It's, it's, I, felt no, so I knew there had to be something. something. I knew there had and, to be um, something. <laughs> there it is, contacts. Okay. So when I click on contacts. Oh, you, uh, you don't have any in there. I have a ton in there. I no, don't. I don't oh. have any. That's what I think. Right. Is what she was saying. Yeah. I only have twenty six. It's certainly not everybody I've written emails to. But how is that where I go to create a circle or a list or whatever? So I'll have to like if I want to send a garden club or you know standing committees or something for master gardeners. Yes. How do you make that group? That's what I'm. That's what I am looking here. You're gonna show me in yours. I'll go back to yours. I don't. I don't have any contacts in mine. So, oh. um, you assign them a label. So just click on one. Hey, Don, in this question mark, could you find the thing about how to create a group? Right here. I think uh, whoever said labels. Yeah. So no contacts with this label. Hmm. Go to your contact list. Select the contacts to label and in the toolbar choose the icon manage labels i'm in my contact list but 
go where? Okay, so you're in your contact list. Yeah, I'm looking at them all. And then um, select contacts to label. So there is there. Can you check? Is there okay. a place to check mark to the left of the person's name? Let me click on one of them. Um, start video call. Send message. Schedule event and send email. I don't have something that says. No, no, it would be it would be just a little box to the left of the name that you would check mark. No. There is nothing like that. Hmm. Nothing over there. Okay, so I have a contact in there. So let me go back to your screen so I can see what you're doing. And now, where was that at? There, ha ha. Okay, so oh. I'm just holding my the um, pointer over it, and I'm going to check mark that. And then up here is manage labels. I only have one person, so. Small group, okay. We could put it in Master Gardener and apply. And if I had more, you could check mark two or three. Okay. And then, nope, I don't want to do that. I need to go back to my email. As you can tell, I don't use my Gmail that much. <laughs> ah, nope, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so now if we compose. Yeah. Ah. Boy, it is slow tonight. And I type M A M G. I'm the only person in there, but that's my M A M G label. Okay. So there would be more. Label. Yeah, and, and so whatever you name the group is what you want to put in there. Okay. Okay. Well, I think the, the answer to all of this whole problem was the fact that I didn't have that little <laughs> that arrow. I didn't see that little cider, and I had none of those things. So, okay. Well, thank you for spending all that time on that for me. I, I've been struggling with that for a long time. It's for all of us. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And the thing is, it might not be exactly the same on any of the. So my Yahoo, Yahoo's the one that I use the most. So do I have to change the screen to share that? Can you see the Yahoo or no? I do want to ask you something about yeah. Yahoo because I don't know and someone's asked me. Mm -hmm. so you've got a Yahoo email mm -hmm. and you send out emails to people, a list of people. And it puts in that email, respond to, and it takes, it makes up an email that you don't have any, you don't own. How, where in Yahoo do you go to deal with that? In the, do I just give you that person's name and I'll send it to you in the email and you can talk to her? Um, yeah. It, it, Absolutely, you can you can do that. All it right. should be in the settings though. Somehow oh, something that, got triggered, a yeah, forward no, or a it something. It had to happen somehow. It didn't because the person doesn't have Outlook. So I found a lot of stuff in Google about Yahoo and Outlook, but it didn't make sense to me. So I may do that, Don. You okay. may get that. <laughs> So can you guys see my Yahoo or? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. excellent. So on my Yahoo, it looks a little different, but it's kind of the same. So this is a square with the little person in here. And then here's my, uh, see, I, I use this one. I have contacts in this one, but then it has lists right here. So then I can choose my list. So I go up here to create one. 
you're saying a group is mm -hmm. yeah, a list is a group a list is a group yep so here's here's the different different ones that i have so here like i was telling you my newsletter proofers i just updated that for the new year <coughs> but then i just go over here And then it brings up anything that has the MANG in there. And so I would click that. And do my and do my email. But the icons might not be exactly the same, but you know, usually if you hold your pointer over it, it will tell you what the icon means. Because sometimes they just do the craziest icons and you're just like, what? Yeah. are you doing all right does anybody else have specific questions do we want to go through was there anything on the list that you really thought sounded interesting you wanted to learn yes Maybe I, should I, I, I would like to know about really deleting email, so in email deleting it and really deleting it really <laughs> deleting it yes things <laughs> never go away all right so here we go so I am deleting this and it goes down to the trash. Mm -hmm. So what I mean, so I really want, if it, if that was a, if that was like a suspicious email that I thought might be like somebody trying to hack into my system, I want to go, I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to go to the trash and delete it again. So just because you hit delete doesn't mean it is off your computer. Just moved it. So, to the <laughs> and, 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 I know some people that like, oh, well, I, I put that in my, in my trash and then they'll go search for something in their trash. I, if, if I am sending something to, to the trash, I really want it to be gone. Can you so. open something up that and look at it if it's in the trash? Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm in my trash Mac right now. Why don't you do that? Matt, if you put something in the trash on a Mac, you can't open it while it's in the trash. You'd have to take it out of the trash. Well, and that's why if it's if it's something that you want off your computer, you know, yeah. that's why what I meant about just because you send it to the trash and depending on the the. I want to say Yahoo does it once a week, but my Gmail will that trash will build up forever. So I, think I, I, I go just, in here. I so I go in here and you can you can click this and and it's gonna say, oh see, it's got 301 in there. And then it's gonna delete them all. So just because you hit the delete from your inbox does not mean you have deleted it. So it could still be there. And again, I was more concerned about that if you thought it was a a suspicious wow. email. You want to get it off your computer gone but were there any other but i don't know if you can schedule the delivery on matt can I could I could put an email together in the next 30 minutes and say deliver that at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. or whatever. I know I, I, I use it at my office in Outlook all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they all have that, but I'm so I don't know if, if they don't. So I'm just looking here. Oh, I guess I could compose an email and go from there. What about the archive? Does anybody ever use the archive and then know not how to find it? <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I think some people might use archive accidentally and then they're lost. Like, where did it go? It said archive and went, oh no, where is it? <laughs> uh, Yahoo has typically, it's up at the top of the screen, the archive. It's one of the few that I think, there it is. You see, it's right up at the top, archive. So you'll find out if you got anything in the archive folder. <laughs> yeah, something. 
I think that's just as sometimes it, it happens and you don't realize you're <laughs> on a Mac you can you know you can do the directional sweeping or you know just hit to the right or to the left if you do the wrong direction it's going to go to the wrong place so here we go I need to find something here that we can delete that I don't care about Anyway, so up here at the top on Yahoo, you've got your different things you can do. You can mark as unread star. Oh, Here's where nice. you can block the sender. I don't want to block Amazon, but <laughs> if you whatever you have highlighted over here and you click on block sender, it's going to block it. Now you can go in and unblock it, but. Um, Just about all of them have can, that now. And here's your good feature. So you don't have to type everything in. If you wanted to add that to your address book, you can click send to contacts. It's going to put it in there. It's still going to let you edit it however you want to edit it. But I was looking to see if I actually had an email from, do I have Mary in there yet? So we what did they mean here. that they're going to have a, what is a raw email? What does that mean? Unfinished? I think, I think it's um, with all the stuff oh, that code. we don't see. Never mind. That's, <laughs> I, know where, I know where that goes. <laughs> Uh, now I got to get away from it. <laughs> there we go. Um, I was I was looking to see if there was somebody in here that I didn't have in my address book that I could put in there. Here, we'll do this one. So you just go up here and say add to sender and then you can put in The information was that, that you want. Were what you was typing that in, or were you typing that in, or did it fill it automatically? No, I was. I it put the email address in there automatically, and then I went and put her name in there. Okay. So then she should be down in the M's now. We were looking at how good your typing skills were, Don. <laughs> oh, it's probably under H, isn't it? No. Didn't I save it? Marie, did you put it under M? <laughs> no. Maybe I didn't hit save. Maybe not. On QuickBooks Online, I use that a lot. And if you void a transaction, so like it'll have what it thinks you, you should choose as a yes or no, it'll say yes. But then the, if you're voiding a transaction that says, do you want to void this and, and no is green. And so I always go to the color and I don't read. And so half the time I have to go back and void it again because I've not, I don't know. Oh, 20 more. There she is probably down here farther bottom so if you don't put their name in there it just goes off of their email address anyway but that's that's an easy way to add it or if you have the email address open i believe you can click on it here and add to contacts So you don't have to, you know, try and remember what their email address is. <laughs> Can you send that in what they used to call a, like a V-card v format? In other words, could you send a, an address to somebody as a V-card? I am. I know you can and I know you can in Outlook. Yeah. Nope, it's just gonna open up the, as an email. How do you select it? What's a V card? So on Outlook, 
it's just um it's like a business card basically mm -hmm. That's oh. whatever information you have filled out in here it will um so if you actually had it looks like a b uh, a business card exactly and and you just you, you, if I sent you a V card, you could open up and it would automatically add it to your mail. Mm -hmm. All right, what else did we have on our list? So when we were talking about sorting email, so you can sit up here and you can sort by date. You can sort by unread. I've read everything. Where are you, Don? Oh, can you see it? No? No. I don't think so. I'm on the um on my I can see it. Outlook. Oh, uh, we're still see I still see Yahoo. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I think we can do it with Yahoo too. So up at the top here, you can sort by. Oh, oh, now it's there. <laughs> now you can sort by newest date, oldest date, starred. I use that a lot because I'll star things that I want to come back to. Do you but get I don't... there? Huh? Do you ever get back there? Uh, as you can see, not so much on this one. <laughs> These were all videos. Yeah, um, that, some of those are I... very good. I watched some of them. I have, but there were ones I wanted to go back and watch again. Right. Um, anyway, I just have not had time to just sit and watch videos. Dr. Chris, you, can, you did really well. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you can sort by sender. You can sort by everything. I mean, however, however you need to find something. I use that a lot, especially mm -hmm. at work. That's why the subject line mm -hmm. is handy, people, so that in that sort thing knows where to look. But here's your search right up here. So you can right. search words, Julie. Yeah. They and it's going to bring up every time. So this is an email from Julie, but here is a email that I sent to Julie. So it's going to bring up everything that has the word. So the more well, you don't, you can't get too detailed, but I try to find like specific words. So. Right. That's probably not a good one for my <laughs> Yahoo. Cause that's where I get all my master gardener stuff, stuff sent. It'll take you some time when you're setting all that up. So be patient about it if, and just be diligent about it. Once you get it set up, it works quite nicely. And then I don't know, it, does, does anybody want to know how to put a signature on your email? Sure. Yeah. I, I yes. always think that's kind of nice. Personalized? No, nope, that's just a box writing email okay so here's your signature and it looks like this is where we turn it on there you go man that's an old one that i had so all i did that was already in there but I don't know if I had one on here. I didn't know. Okay, we'll do one on here. So all I did was click click in that box once I turned it on. Sorry, doesn't do me any good to point with my finger. So that turns the signature on and off. And then we can do test email. And you can change colors, you can add, here's all your fonts. You can center it, fold, put a happy face on there. 
surprised face. It's easier than some others. <laughs> okay. And then that, when I go, I got to go back to my inbox and I got to go to that email on Hunter House. So now when you hit compose, that's your signature. So you just type above this. So you can have it, you know, what, whatever you want. Um, my one at work is pretty much just like my business card, has our company logo, address, my, my work phone number, you know, how to contact me. So, you know, if you can, you can set it up however you want it on my personal one. At one time, I used to have that quote at the bottom. So you could change it up for the seasons for... <laughs> But it, when it's turned on, it, it's on all the time. So anytime you send an email. And I do believe you can, I do believe you can delete it if you didn't want it on there for a particular email. Yep. And that was just up here in the settings. All right. So you can see over here, I have, maybe we can find it. These are all my other um, folders. I don't use them as much now um, on my personal stuff as I do at work, but you can um, on here, just add a new folder. And then you can just move. Move that email out of your inbox, and it shows up in there. You just you, can, you would you could drag it, right? You can drag it, or you can click. You right. Can find, find some more. You can checkbox these, and then go up here and use your move function. If you're doing up a here. lot. Mm -hmm. And that's when I sort it by name, and then you can move all of the specific ones that you want. You know by name, it's easier to do it by name that way. Or if you wanted to click on that one, let me see if it works, maybe it won't. Hold down the shift key, oh, it automatically. So I clicked on the first one and then I went to the last one I wanted to do, hold down the shift key and left click again and it highlighted all of those. Automatically without having to go and click each one. Anyway, are there, are there any other specific issues people are having with their? With their email, any, any specific questions? No, but that's very helpful what you've told me, yeah. I don't know if you can do that. I know on Outlook, if I change, tell me if you can see the Outlook. So on Outlook has a cool feature called Red Receipt. Yeah. So if you send an email, and you go up in here to options, and you can tell it that you want to request a red receipt. So when that person gets that email and they open it up, it lets you know that they opened the email. <laughs> that would be so, good. So I use that when I used to do um, accounts receivable. <laughs> they couldn't say, oh, I didn't get your email. <laughs> Can you repeat that again? I'm having trouble seeing the tiny screen. So what, what did you do on that to see if they read it? Okay, it will send, I, I, did, I just um, showed you how to tell it you wanted to get a red receipt. Okay. So here, so I clicked on options and then I went over to the three dots 
and I went down to click on request red receipt. You can say request delivery. I don't use that as much because I like this. And then what Outlooks does is once that person opens that email, it sends you an email and says, Julie just read your email at this date and time. Does Gmail have the same? Yes, they option? all have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. They all have something. It might be worded slightly different, but it, it, it's definitely all there. Okay. You can set that up to make sure that once they open it, you're going to know they opened it. You, you might not know whether they really read it. <laughs> so the three dots, I see what you're doing, but I don't see. I'm, I'm, I'm looking on Gmail to see if. Uh, where would it be? Insert a signature. You're probably in settings. Hmm. Smart compose feedback. <laughs> what? Nope. No. <laughs> I thought Gmail was so great after leaving AOL, but maybe it's not. Well, they all, I think they all have their own little idiosyncrasies and it's what you get used to. And what I find is there's something really nice in all of them, but they don't that doesn't help anybody because you, you know, you're just trading for one for the other. So whatever you're comfortable with. I don't, it's I'm safe. not a Yahoo mail person, but this is definitely improved over what it used to be. Definitely. Request a read receipt. Oh, on the bottom right, more options. It didn't, that didn't show Yeah, up. I'm not, I'm not seeing more options. Scroll down and see if it's underneath the bottom and you don't see the bottom of the screen, maybe. I was trying to move it and it won't move. It won't up. move? Uh -uh. Maybe because the message is there? There. Now let's what, try it. What did you click on? Um, I did the full screen. Okay. Still don't see oh, now it. I, now I made it go away. There it is. Yeah, I don't see anything that says. Read receipt. Uh -uh. Put read receipt and search me and see what our. I, I mean, I, I Googled it and that's, it yeah. said on your. Open Gmail. Compose. Put, compose your bottom email. right. More options. Maybe you know, I have to put something you know in the email. Yeah, more options is a tiny little arrow. Oh, no, that can't be it. Is it over there by the trash can where it says more options? There's three little dots there. I, I clicked on that and I did not see. No, it's not check there. spelling print. No, it doesn't, does it? Receipts is on there. Oh, well, no. It's got to be somewhere. Huh. I thought maybe if I put something in here. As if it's ready to go. Yeah. Get back up here. <laughs> is it under the arrow where where the blue box that says send is? Uh-uh. The only thing that was there the is schedule or send. Okay. Hmm. I've never seen that before. Confidential. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. So that restricts it from being forwarded. Oh, that's cool. So that was over here under the, I don't know, it looks like a little lock. Hmm. 
I'm sure it's in here somewhere. It has to be. That's where I find Gmail hides most of their stuff is in this, wherever you just clicked on. The settings? Yeah. Nudge has been around forever. <laughs> you tried to. I need to set the uh, smart reply uh, thing so that I'm always. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> There's a vacation responder. Vacation. I like that. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was that was one of the things. So er every. And finding it is always different, but you can say first day and last day. And if somebody sends you an email, they get a little thing saying, I'm on vacation. I'm not going to be checking my emails or um, I always do it at work. Say if you, I won't be back till this day, but if you need help, contact the, you know, my supervisor or whatever and put their contact information in. And it can. Could it be an advanced? Where'd you see advanced? Uh, here. At the across the top. We'll go to the far right. Yep. There you go. No. Well, that's customizing things. That you don't want to no, no, mess with that. Yeah, this one is the old. Yeah, it's gotta be in here somewhere. Oh, goodness. I'll mess around with it. It's got to right. be here somewhere. I can Google it. <laughs> but I don't feel so bad having so much trouble finding stuff because obviously it's not that easy to do. <laughs> no, it's not. The mail system is kind of complex. The mail systems really are complex. So you just have to keep clicking. You know, it isn't going to hurt to read it and go, nope, don't need that. What are the rules for bulk mail in some of these mail systems? You mentioned you send a hundred. I mean, it, 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 it depends. Everyone's different. Uh huh. Oh, interesting. Prevent mail to Gmail users from being blocked or sent to spam. Huh. They must have had a problem in order to put that <laughs> <in> there. <laughs> Gmail limits your sending rate. Wow, Gmail box. Wow. They do and it's them. it's different because it um I mean especially if you're using a business email address um, for people to contact you they they might have a extra firewall protection in addition to what's with the email server as well so chances are like ninety nine percent they will have another firewall engaged users unsubscribe. Interesting. Anyway, we can get lost in that, can't we? We could. <laughs> and have had, have done that before. <clears throat> Does any, anybody have any other questions? Good. I, I see we're back to our going over our time limit again. <laughs> All right, you're fine. I think most people, it's, it's dinner time for most folks. So yeah, they yeah. couldn't do that they have to go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. And then I didn't know, of course, there's not very many people on here. 
um, Julie and I were talking about the photo class and mm -hmm. trying to figure out what exactly people wanted to learn at that one, but maybe I'll send that out in, in the next class email and we'll get some responses back on that so we can. And you kind of need to narrow it down on what people want to know. I mean, for, are they yes. talking about putting it into a document? Are you talking about resizing it? Are you talking about moving it off of a piece of equipment and into something else? There's like a lot. And if we try to do it all in one, <laughs> it doesn't work. I mean, I, it, it might be just as simple just to show people how to put a photo that you have on your computer into a Word document. Right. A simple action. But we can do a bunch of those things. Unread message icon. I like that unread message icon. Sometimes I turn that back on. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to that. Have you used Hangout? I have not. What That's kind of that? like a Zoom meeting kind of, isn't it? I think it is. On it, may not, it might not be visual, but it it's, I think it's, it's been around for a while. It, does. it says join a meeting or a new yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. they, I think they have it. I've not used it either. So I don't know. Awesome. Excellent. Well, I guess until oh. until next time, next year, right? Yeah. <laughs> 2021. We can all celebrate now. 2020 is going to go away, as we hope. <laughs> Well, Del, we thank you for doing that for us. Uh, yes. Doing these computer yeah. classes this year, they've been very informative. I've actually learned a few things myself. And uh, I can tell you this, I know she had to go to dinner, but Miss Mary has definitely learned a lot as well. So we, we appreciate uh, you doing okay. this and definitely look forward to, you know, doing it again uh, next year. Well, I think, I think it'll be fun to delve in a little deeper to yeah. the, you know, Word and Excel and... If we take little bitty pieces... Mm -hmm. it'll, and people it'll can be practice it. And mm -hmm. they can actually do that then you you actually learn more if you just you maybe focus on one or two small things and, and and instead of because the layout like this people you just have to go in and click and read because almost everything has something else hidden behind it yep i agree i agree you know apple is notorious for that <laughs> i've told don before apple should be called doors because behind <laughs> the door is where they've got everything. It's not up right in front of your face. It can't be because there's too many options. So, well, I hope everybody has a safe and uh, whatever Christmas is going to be for y'all. Yes, yes. Yep.